All right. Uh, yeah, I'm from Picnic Robotics, and I'm here to talk about a new uh, driver for universal robots. So first, I'm going to give you a rundown of the current state in ROS2 manipulators. Uh, it's a pretty short list, so that won't take too long. I'll uh, show you some videos of the new driver. Um, we'll talk about its capabilities, some of the current limitations. And then today, we're actually announcing the beta release. Uh, so it'd be great if anybody has a UR robot and they can go test this. And then finally, I'll talk about some of the challenges we encountered with ROS2 control. Uh, so first off, here's kind of a quick history of manipulators uh, that have ROS2 drivers officially supported and open source. So the very first one was Accutronic. I think they were way ahead of the curve. Uh, they released their driver in 2019. Um, I think maybe they were a little bit too far on the bleeding edge because they've uh, shut down since then. Uh, that was a Spanish company. Um, and then today, I just saw that Doosan Robotics announced a new official package. I don't know anything about them other than that they're based in South Korea. But I think it's a funny coincidence that they announced their release, you know, the same day that we're announcing the UR release. And now uh, Stretch Robotics, or Hello Ro Robot, is um, we're working on a driver for their mobile manipulator. Um, this one's kind of interesting. It has a really simple telescoping arm. And we had to do some work behind the scenes and move it so it can handle this mobile base uh, reasonably well. And we're probably going to be re releasing that one for a May demo for ROS2 Groovy. And then today, we're finally um, announcing the beta release of the Universal Robots driver, which supports uh, seven different robot models. And you guys probably know that's one of the most popular uh, robots in ROS and even across the world. Uh, we've seen it in a lot of videos today. So like I said, what's supported? Um, all the robot models, actually, from the 3 kilogram all the way up to the 16 kilogram versions. And that's both the older E series and the newer, um, or the, sorry, the older UR3, UR5, UR10, and the newer E series. So, uh, what can this new driver do? Well, more or less, it can do the same things the old ROS1 package did. Uh, we kept a ton of the code, um, a ton of the URDFs and stuff are very similar. And it can uh, do both streaming commands and trajectory commands. Uh, so for streaming commands, that's for things like teleoperation. You know, if you want to run the robot with a joystick or something like that with an Xbox controller, it needs to be able to react in a real-time fashion. So uh, we can do that with this new driver. Um, compliance is the same deal. You know, if you make contact with a, a surface unexpectedly, you need, need to be able to stop suddenly. We can also do that. And then, of course, there's kind of the traditional trajectory execution that you guys have probably seen tons of times with Move It. Um, we can do that very well. Some of the new capability that we've had to add for ROS2 control is, uh, first off, um, general purpose input output for the end effector. So that's for things like maybe triggering pneumatic cylinders or something like that on the end effector. Uh, we also have, of course, the URE series has built in uh, torque sensors on the joints. So we added some interfaces in ROS2 control to monitor those torque sensors. And then the last contribution comes out of FCI, um, and it uh, interfaces with the speed slider on the UR pendant. So you can decrease the motion speed or increase it quite easily, and it integrates with that just like it did in ROS1. So with that said, let's go ahead and watch a few videos. Um, now this first one is uh, a new uh, product that Picnic is working on called Move It Studio. It's designed to be kind of a programming-free interface for the use of Move It. Um, and basically everything in this video is running ROS2, even the gripper um, has been integrated with ROS2, and that's all publicly available. So it's just going to open a drawer. And it, you know, executes trajectories just like in ROS1.
All right, next up is an example of streaming commands. So I call this the Jeff Bezos video. Unfortunately, this was made with ROS1, but there's nothing preventing this from being done in ROS2 now, uh, at least in terms of controlling the robot. So he's teleoperating these robots with some haptic feedback gloves that are really awesome. All right, um, so the last video I wanna to show today is uh, related to compliance. And this is also from ROS1, but it should be possible in ROS2 now. Uh, the compliance framework hasn't been released yet, but um, in terms of you know commanding the robot itself, the capabilities are there. Okay, so hopefully the, that gives you guys some overview of the different control modalities, uh, the ways you can control these UR robots in ROS2 now. So I don't know if any robot manufacturers are listening, but if they do, I wanna kind of mention something. You know, Picnic works with a bunch of startups and previously I was a researcher and we're always trying to use robots in unusual ways. And one of the things with the UR robots is they make it really easy to switch control modalities. So we saw some videos, you can switch between streaming or trajectories, and you can also switch between position and velocity control. And velocity control is very good for stuff like um, contact tasks with you know, impedance or admittance. Um, so I wanna encourage more robot manufacturers to try to make their robots a little bit more flexible in terms of how you control them. Uh, another good thing is that uh, the, the UR driver is somewhat hackable at a low level. Well, I guess it's completely hackable if you want to, but um, I'll give you an example of why that's important. Uh, we have a project where fast cycle time is really critical, and they're just using the UR robot as kind of a test robot before their custom robot arrives. 
And for this demonstration, they really wanted to show fast cycle time. So we went ahead and changed a YAML parameter to increase the robot acceleration by 4x. Uh, we know that this is gonna hurt hardware longevity, but we really don't care. We're just using this robot temporarily and we wanna make a cool demo. Um, so I think it's really great uh, to have all these flexible options of control modalities and be able to really get in at a low level and change the parameters however we want to. So uh, why should you use ROS2? Um, these are some of the new features of ROS2 that we care about from the uh, controls perspective. So the first thing you guys have probably heard about node components. Um, basically what that means is that a node, well, previously in ROS1, you would have many nodes. Well, now in ROS2, you can create a shared library instead and launch it as part of a single process. Um, so people often call that node components. And that increases, or sorry, it decreases internal data transfer. I, I guess you could say it, it essentially eliminates it be, um, because the memory is already present and the whole process shares it. Uh, so that helps us decrease latency. Um, another benefit, which I don't know much about in particular, but is improved security. Um, so you can tune the DDS middleware uh, and maybe select uh, middleware that meets your security needs. You can also tune the DDS middleware uh, to improve communication between nodes. Um, so Kat kind of showed some graphs of how some middlewares perform better on certain uh, measurements or metrics than other middlewares. Uh, and one example I'm aware of is one middleware seems to be really good at uh, transmitting large messages. Another middleware is very good at transmitting small messages very quickly. So if we're going to um, use this controller, we will probably want to choose the uh, small messages very quickly uh, in terms of controlling robot motion. But it's nice to have that flexibility. And so these top three have green check marks next to them because uh, we're already using them either in Move It or in this new UR driver. The bottom one, I think we have not started using yet, but um, I expect we will in the future. It seems like a nice feature and that's deterministic launching. So a lot of the time you may have node A that needs to wait on node B for a you know service to become available or something. And now you can easily define that in a launch file. So like I said, uh, we're, we tested this robot with I'd say about three or four different people um, yesterday and today. So uh, we think it's ready for the beta release. So if you have a UR, please go here and try it out. Um, leave an issue if you have any problems. Um, and then in the near future, we're gonna transfer this uh, repository ownership to Universal Robots. So there are some limitations of the beta release. It hasn't quite reached feature parity with the ROS1 version yet. Uh, one thing holding us back is that trajectories cannot be executed in velocity mode. Um, that should be easy to add and coming very soon. I also suspect uh, it's really not an important feature for most people. Um, another issue, and this has been an issue for a long time with MoveIt, is that you can do acceleration limited trajectories. You cannot do jerk limited trajectories. Uh, usually large industrial robots require jerk limited trajectories. The good news is there were some uh, promising open source packages that have been released recently. Uh, they're called Topico and Ruckig. So we're gonna look at integrating those and move it probably within the next six months. And then uh, we should be able to, um, you know, perform trajectories even with very large industrial robots. And then particular to the UR series of robots, uh, we cannot run the kinematics calibration routine yet, um, but they usually ship from the factory with a pretty good kinematics calibration. So I suspect this is something that won't affect a lot of users at all. Okay, uh, so I've said a lot of nice things about ROS2. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and beat up on it a little bit now. So uh, one of our development challenges is that uh, in particular ROS2 control is continuously breaking their API and their ABI as they add new features. Uh, we needed a lot of new features like um, force torque sensing and end effector IO. Uh, so in order to create those features, they have to break ABI so I can't really complain about it, but it does make it a challenge that um, we're constantly updating our code to stay caught up with them. Uh, another uh, second bullet point that I think is really ridiculous um, is 
it's very difficult to add arguments to launch files in ROS2, at least as far as we could find. Um, it's not really documented anywhere either. So I'll give you an example from ROS1. If you want to set your robot IP, it's one line, you know, name equals robot IP, value equals whatever. Uh, so in ROS2, this is what we had to do for the same thing. Um, and yeah, first you have to declare the argument, then you have to initialize it, and then you actually have to use the argument. So it's quite a few lines just to recreate the same um, argument. So that's one thing I wish that could change, you know, if I could like wa wave my magic wand. Um, so last, I just want to thank all the contributors to this new UR driver, quite a few Picnic Robotics employees, FCI, um, Mar Marvin Besselman wrote the um, interface with the speed sliders on the teach pendant and did some testing for us. I want to thank Heish for uh, quite a bit of helpful feedback. And then thank you to Universal Robots for allowing us the opportunity to work on this.